DC Universe Rebirth, the biggest comics event of the 21st century, the greatest graphic novels, volume one collections of the best-selling comic books. Get them now wherever graphic novels are sold. Good afternoon, everybody. We're almost there. DC staffers, we're almost there. This is great. Uh, we got the great Alex Sinclair on the stage, everybody. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Colorist of some of the best books uh, that we have. The best books we have, actually. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. Yeah. No. Ooh, I'm going to get fired. So, Alex, why don't you tell everybody here what you do and what we're going to be we'll see you working on today. So, I'm a colorist. I, uh, I color comic books for a living. Um, about 99% of the comics that you see out there are colored digitally. Uh, and most of us use our computers, whether they be Macs or PCs or whatever. Uh, and every time I do this each year, I come up with a bunch of toys and junk and set it all up. And uh, it looks like a computer store threw up on this desk. I thought this year we'd change it up a little bit and show you um, something I've been playing with recently. I've been playing on an iPad Pro, uh, doing some of the prep work, the background work on that. and then importing it into Photoshop on my computer and then finishing it off. So um, the reason I've been doing this is because instead of carrying all that stuff, this is it. This is what comes with me. Uh, so I work with this, use the pencil. Uh, I use a program called Procreate, uh, which is a great painting program. And this is kind of how I do it. Uh, and what we'll do is I'll show you a little bit of how, how I go about creating a page or coloring a page. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's completely done. All right, so we're kind of going to jump into it. Um, I prepped the file by using layers. You can kind of see here on the, on the upper right corner, I've set up the, the line art to be floating above this blank space. Uh, and and uh, the line art is also, anything that's white on that line art becomes transparent because I have it set up to be, uh, it's called multiply. So it, it, it only will uh, react with other colors. So if white is there, it's almost like it's transparent. So that's, that's one of the setups. And then um, it's very simple. I just kind of go in and I can zoom in as much as I want. I'll use a select tool and then just jump right in. There you go. Let's try it again. Colored the whole page blue. That's right. So I should say this is a page from the new Suicide Squad book uh, that's coming out written by Rob Williams um, and art by uh, DC co-publisher Jim Lee, who you might know. He's pretty good. And, uh, and Scott Williams, one of the best inkers in the entire business. And the program's great. I, I, I'm, I'm selecting the kind of brush that I want to use. Uh, I'm going to select the size and the opacity of the, of the brush that I want to work with. I'm going to go in here and pick the color. And I can really select anything that I want Here's where I pick the tints and the shades of that color. And this is where the hue wheel uh, comes into play. I'm gonna go with a little bit of a kind of burnt blue. Uh, go straight on here. And then just, let me get back to my selection here. Okay. All right, here we go. So now, as I start to paint on here, only certain areas are, are, are affected, and then I, I'm going to come back with a little bit, add a little bit of texture. And all these are the kind of brush presets that, that come with the program. You can create your own brushes. I'm going to go here with something called Rusted Decay to give it some texture. Blow it up, decrease the texture, increase the value. Just to, to make sure that uh, since I'm going to color her very clean and slick, I want some texture in that background so that she pops off of it. Just visually, your eyes tend to uh, uh, pop the, the elements different ways. And we're going to go back and select, grab her skin. And through this, it's just, it's about kind of uh, figuring out what part of the drawing is what, so this is part of her palm, here's her fingers, she's holding two guns, so I'm trying to read what Jim's drawn in Scott's inked. 
And since I'm going to color the, the hair la later, I'm, I don't have to worry about being super clean around here. Right now we're worried about her face. Uh, go back to the brush, select the white. In fact, I'm going to select this little bit of kind of bluish white for her. Kind of put down a base coat. And then start going to town. Shading a little bit. Create some of the shadowing. I'm also going to come in with a little bit more of a harder edge brush and put in her eyeshadow. So as you see, Harley always has. It's always about her black and red and her um, One of the hardest things to do is, is keep track of what's, what half is red and what half is, is, is black for her. Uh, whether it's the makeup, the, the shirt, the shorts, the boots, the socks, the, the earrings, the gloves, the, the fingernails. Uh, so I actually have like a, 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 a wireframe Harley that I've drawn and then uh, I've actually just flatted out the colors. So I just glance at it and remember because sometimes it's easy to remember but if she's turned around and, and her left hands coming across her body, uh, I have to remember that that's, you know, that's the blue glove with the red fingernails hand and not the other way around. So it's, she's cute, she's amazing, but man, she's confusing the color because <laughs> it's, everything is, and it's, everything is opposite from the other. So her hair on her right side is red, which means that the eyeshadow on her left eye is, is red. And then, so it alternates. So the suit alternates the boots all the way down. I'm very confused right now. Oh yeah, trust me. So it's a manual process. There's no built-in program here that's going to remember for you. Oh no, I wish. And then going from panel to panel, is there is there any type type of uh, automatic process that will help you remember exactly what color you're using, exactly what shade of red or blue? Um, I have a preset uh, palette on my computer for each character. So each character has a set of swatches. So I have a a set of swatches that have Harley's skin, Harley's lips, Harley's hair, Harley's red and blue, and then Harley's secondary red and blue because her jacket red is different from her outfit I red. See. Yep. So I do have a set of swatches for every character. So on the Harley book, every character in the Harley book has a set of swatches. Every character on the Superman book has, has a set of swatches. So I, I import these uh, as I go along. All right, so I'm going to go back and start to... Uh, Add some shading to Harley here. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of just taking cues from what Scott and Jim have put down shadow-wise to start to add the shadowing and the highlighting. And I just, just very slowly build up. So kind of like an inker, you're adding a little bit more, a little more texture, a little bit more depth here, right? Right, right. So again, uh, making sure that I follow the the uh, the light sources that Jim and Scott have laid to make sure that I'm not uh, confusing them uh, or contradicting what they've done before, so that it looks like a, a, a cohesive piece. Uh, I think the collaboration is my favorite part of working in comics and then I get to work with two, one or two other artists and we all kind of all put this one image uh, together. Uh, so it's always fun that to, to use their work as you know, a guide, as an inspiration um, uh, and, and, and it's always fun to see what, uh, what everybody else is doing on the book ahead of you. With light and shadow and things like that, are you using photo reference or is this just your experience coming through? It's, yeah, so this is years and years of rendering, you know, superheroes, human faces and bodies and, and, and gestures. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, when, it, when it comes to very specific mechanical stuff, I'll pull up reference just to make sure that I get the colors right. So if there's an AK-47 somewhere, <laughs> I gotta make sure that it, the color is right so we know it's an AK-47. I see, yeah. Uh, so, 
Um, but other than that, if it's a brand new Batmobile, I kind of get to play with that scheme uh, and add different elements to it. Very but cool. if it's something that's been established before, I do have to look it up, make sure that I'm getting it right. So people, when they look at it, they immediately know what it is. Uh, some people always ask um, if I, what kind of say I have in the color scheme, what kind of say I have in, in the, the, the lighting that I use. Um, um, and usually what I do is I, I'll read the script for the book along with the art to kind of get uh, cues from the, from the writer to see if they ask for a specific time of day which will influence the palette. Uh, or if there's specific color notes there, whether if there's a new villain, if they have new notes on the on the costume colors or the power. So if they have a power that's orange, that's definitely going to be um, something that's going to influence how I want to light that the, the particular panel page sequence. Um, and then once I've I've uh, read the script, I'll break the the issue down into um, into scenes, and I'll color each scene um, um, consecutively. So if, if pages one, two, five, eight, and nine are outside with Superman, I'll color all those of them together so there's a consistency to the, to the colors that I'm using for, for rendering uh, and for that background. And um, if the next sequence is in the Batcave with Batman, then obviously my, my palette, my scheme changes. But I, again, I like to do them in order uh, to, to maintain that consistency. And how often are you showing pages back to the writer or the, or the penciler? Uh, as I actually upload each page as I finish it to a, to a server for uh, everyone involved in the book to look at. So the editors, the writer, and uh, say for Su 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 Squad, Suicide Squad, Jim and Scott will look at them. Uh, that way I'm getting corrections or feedback on the fly that I can apply to the pages as we go. Because sometimes the book is, is running tight on the deadline and um, it makes more sense for me to be able to incorporate the changes as, as they're being made as opposed to, hey, this character has the wrong color here, and you need to correct now 10 pages of that, as opposed to, hey, make sure that you fix this on the, as you continue. This is instantaneous sending, yeah. obviously, yep, upload. Yep, yep. But the downside is you don't get to smell how good Jim Lee smells on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> yeah. That would be great. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. Oh, <laughs> the guy smells good, I'll tell you. Uh, how, long, how long have you been doing this? I've been working um, in the industry for 23 years now. Oh wow! So how has uh, how has the technology changed <laughs> your work? I mean, is uh, it just completely different from when you first started? It is. Um, mm -hmm. The first machine I ever did any coloring on for Wildstorm back then. Uh, in fact, it was before Wildstorm was Wildstorm. It was Homage Studio still. Uh, it was a twenty thousand dollar computer that I think ran on 250 megahertz and one Ooh. gig of RAM. 200, oh my God. So, and that gig of RAM I think back then cost $1,000. I think wow. you can get a gig of RAM now for 75 bucks. <laughs> so, and if your machine doesn't have 16 gigs of RAM to run your Photoshop, your machine's a, a slug. So, you know, uh, technology-wise it's changed a lot. Uh, uh, Photoshop has evolved a lot in that time as I've used it. Uh, it's become, it's gone from a computer program really to a, a painting medium. Uh, I equate photo, using Photoshop to learning how to paint with oil paint, watercolor, uh, anything like that. So it is really a, a, paint, uh, a painting medium. So we've got a few minutes left here. So how, okay. you know, how long does it take you, generally speaking, to, to color a page or a panel um, even? So a page like this... Um, a page like this will take anywhere from about three to four hours, mm -hmm. um, but this is a fairly busy page. Yeah. Uh, coloring over gym stuff is, 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 is hard in that everything that you see here is so detailed and dead on in every way. So nuanced, it's technically. Right? Yeah. So I have to make sure that what I do complements it and is also precise. Uh, exactly. So that there's a lot of, of, of uh, making sure that as I'm rendering, I'm, I'm nailing the art. Uh, and, and, and getting the uh, getting technically correct everything so and anatom anatomically as well some pages do take uh, a little bit less than that I average less uh, I think I average anywhere from 
an hour and a half to four hours a page, depending wow. on the book. It also depends on the deadline. So if I have 16 hours till deadline and I have eight pages, I can't do more than two hours a page. Do you guys have any questions as we're kind of going through? Yeah, sure. How did you get to the, uh, the multiply? Uh, how are you coloring behind the uh, white background? How do you get to the white? I'm sorry. The the multi you're talking about multiply coloring behind a white background. Yeah, so how this did you do that. So this layer here, if you tap on the little, it gives you options to do many different functions uh, or modes. So that let's say that I wanted to add an extra layer here to do highlights, I would do a screen layer. So that as I paint, it highlights because it's screening back. So it's bleaching the color a little bit. So I, in Photoshop, I really only use one layer to do all the highlighting and shading. And then I, I start to add different layers for the special effects. Um, uh, with Procreate and the iPad, uh, I tend to um, try and stay to that same rule, but sometimes I'll do what I just did. Um, I'll create a screen layer to put a bunch of highlights on it um, to make sure that it's working as a whole on a page. Um, and then once it's done, what you can do is you can take these and if you pinch them together, it merges the two layers and it just becomes one. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'll kind of work my way through the page that way. Um, I tend to do the easy panels first, uh, especially if, if I'm kind of getting started. I'll, I'll do the headshots first, because I like to get the detail into the faces. And then I'll do the kind of technical panel at the end, um, So because I, I treat the backgrounds in chunks, uh, like foreground, middle ground, background chunks. Uh, and that's how I render them. and, and I. I increase the detail as I get closer to the foreground and decreases as you move backwards. And that, it's kind of like how your eye sees things, right? It starts to kind of go out of focus as, as things move away from you. It also tends to lighten up, much like, you know, uh, I tell people when you're standing on top of a mountain looking out at a valley, uh, even though the trees right here are the same color as the trees 200 yards away, they look a lot lighter because there's a lot of air that creates, that lightens it. Right. So you're right. So it's called atmospheric perspective. So I tend to do that a lot too as well with my work. I'll lighten it as it recedes to make it, um, to give it that three, uh, three, three dimensionality. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys want to see what the page looks like done? Yeah. Woo. Beautiful stuff. So I've gone through and, and, uh, they're standing inside a, uh, a glass uh, cell. So this is what you're seeing here, up here in the, um, uh, you can kind of see that there's a glass partition between them and that far background uh, in those walls. Um, so I'm using that glass to, to really lighten up the black, the ink, so that the only elements that are really black, uh, outlined in black, are the characters in the foreground so they can really pop forward. And then I've cheated a little bit and added a little bit extra blue to Killer Croc in the foreground so that he almost gets pulled even with the viewer. So that's the, the chunks that I'm talking about. So he's the foreground, they're the middle ground, and everything else is the background. It's just, just three chunks that we're always kind of worried about. Then the same in the, just the simple streaks on the glass and that back, on the background and those headshots. Uh, puts him in that environment and then pulls them back because they're a little bit lighter and your eye kind of tends to look at it and accept it uh, and it's, it's almost like a natural reaction for you to go, oh yeah, yeah. It, it looks okay to me. Yeah, looks more than okay, looks more than okay. <laughs> Everyone, let's uh, give a round of applause for Alex Sinclair. Thank you. You gonna give away that iPad now? Like those ah, no. no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I already gave away his Joker sculpture. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. All right, thanks Alex. Thanks Thank guys. Thank you, thanks man.